So when we started this program, the first thing we did was use digital techniques to model the vehicle. Our analysis was focused around protection of the battery, and the battery sits in the sill area here inside the vehicle. So our load path is based around crushing the front structure and allowing the energy to be dispersed and then transferring that load down and through the sills. This avoids the battery being loaded up and avoids any intrusion into the battery area in this point. Uh, the battery itself has been designed, engineered and tested to withstand extremes of temperature, vibration and electrical interference. The battery itself is designed to be very robust. It can withstand three tonnes of force at local points the size of my hand, around and at the top, which simulates a crash impact. And it can withstand five tonnes of force at points the size of my hand on the underside, which uh, simulates uh, curb strikes and bollard strikes. Uh, the battery itself is fire resistant. In the event of a fire, only minimal internal damage is permitted. It's also waterproof. It can be submerged for long periods of time and no water ingress is permitted. In the event of an accident, the vehicle safety systems will disable all high voltage hazards within a second of a crash being detected, making the vehicle up safe to recover and then to repair. The high voltage control system monitors itself hundreds of times a second in order to check to make sure that the high voltage components, the electrical connectivity and the connector ceiling are all within safe operating parameters. It's incredibly unlikely that anyone could electrocute themselves with our vehicle. Uh, the reason for this is that the vehicle control systems monitor the wiring and the control units to make sure that everything's in a safe operating condition, which includes uh, current leakage, which would mean tampering. In the driver's compartment, we have a driver's seat belt and pretensioner, we have a driver's airbag, we have a thorax airbag, and we have a curtain airbag. We also have something called a brake disconnect, which reduces the chances of foot injury in the event of an accident. In the passenger cabin, we have seat belts on all seats, we, ha we have a curtain airbag, and we also have a lap restraint for those in the wheelchair. In the event of a pedestrian or a cyclist moving out in front of the vehicle, uh, the vehicle will do two things. It will either allow the driver to brake, or if it feels that the driver can't brake in time, it will autonomously brake and ensure that there is no collision. So this is what we call accident avoidance. Stealing batteries. Um, I think that that's going to be quite a popular thing, that you'll be getting your batteries stolen out of your vehicle. You'll come to start your vehicle in the morning and the batteries could be stolen. There are various levels of protection around the high voltage battery, even before we look at the built-in features of the high voltage battery. The aluminium structure of the vehicle has been designed to protect the high voltage battery. Uh, the battery itself is independent of the vehicle structure, so it's a separate part protected in effect by a cage, which is the structure itself. To be honest, it's almost impossible to remove the battery on the driveway. The battery itself weighs almost 350 kilos and has 35 fixings. In addition to the battery itself, you would have to disconnect the exhaust, coolant pipes and the high voltage wiring. Uh, without specialised equipment and a vehicle lift, it wouldn't be possible. If anyone could actually achieve this, I would like to recruit them. The other thing is, how comes the Tesla can go for 200 miles and a, a, a licensed taxi, the new cab apparently, um, as we don't know, because there's still no information really about the cabs, can only go for 100 miles without recharging. My worry is, is the, uh, the longevity of the batteries. Battery swapping is technically possible, but throughout this project there are two things that have led us to not pursue this any further. The, the first one of these is we're going to production with what really is state-of-the-art battery cell technology. So over the midterm, we don't expect any significant improvements in what is delivered to the customer through cell development. The, the second point is our battery is appropriately sized to cover what we expect to be most taxi drivers' daily usage on electric only. So a small improvement to battery electric range in the context of future developments in availability of rapid charging infrastructure is not expected to be something that customers are asking for. The battery we have opted for allows us to operate competitively in our market sector and we don't expect this to change significantly in the future.
we don't earn the same money as before. And to be honest, we are not afford to buy 10,000 more or per grand uh, more expensive car. So we took the TX5 around the country to focus groups, introducing passengers uh, to the vehicle inside and outside, talking about a range of features. Uh, it was very clear talking to passengers that they felt that the vehicle was modern, smart, innovative. It was clearly a forward-thinking brand. Well, passengers loved the fact that the vehicle had six seats. Um, there was clear advantages for the sharing of fares, for the start or the end of a night out, for example, or indeed uh, an airport run. Um, there, there is a clear opportunity for the, uh, the new model to compete very successfully with other six-seaters on the market. Um, passengers with mobility issues or wheelchair users loved the easy points of access. Uh, they felt very safe. Um, they certainly thought this, the, the new vehicle was, was something that they would consider um, uh, over and above other vehicles on the market. And I'm pleased not just because it's nice for me to come here and see that, I'm pleased because I'm a, a campaigner and um, I work on environmental issues and on air pollution. Um, I really want to see in London um, this iconic brand leading the way in terms of electric vehicles. If people see that taxis can be electric, then um, you know, these are hard working kind of workhorse vehicles, then you know, of course electric vehicles can work for anyone. The ramp on this taxi is a lot longer, so makes it a lot easier to get up because the current taxi the ramps are a lot shorter so if there's no curb or any access point it's, a, it's quite a steep incline then the charging points are quite helpful because sometimes that uh, i haven't got time to go home and charge my phone i need to get to my house so i have to be traveling and charge my phone because i've been stranded in some places before because my phone's died being forward face is a lot better because if you're being asked for directions you don't know where you're going, you can't really see and you have to strain to look where you're going and it's nice to feel like you're just sitting in a normal seat. Oh, I'd like it but I mean, you know, it's uh, down the list. We. Uh, we asked customers about specifically about some of the features. Uh, they really loved the uh, the fact that the vehicle is Wi-Fi enabled, uh, the charging points, um, the modern payment facilities. Um, the panoramic roof was was really well liked as well. It added to a feeling of spaciousness and overall ride comfort. Well, we spoke specifically to drivers who currently don't uh, drive the black cab um, and a lot of them had preconceptions about the black cab uh, and they also had a high degree of, of brand loyalty to their current vehicle. Um, one of the clear observations during the research was that these drivers really loved the high spec of, of the vehicle. They were very much surprised about the quality um, in the inside and outside of the vehicle. It makes the interior feel light and breezy and far bigger actually than, than it already is. What is already a, a spacious environment feels even bigger. And what it also does is it adds interest to every journey. Uh, there's some amazing views of the skyline out of the glass roof. So whether you're a tourist or whether you're just a business traveler or even a local, it gives you a new perspective on the city. Uh, of course, we have to be very careful with the materials we use to create the roof panel. Uh, it needs to keep passengers cool, even on the hottest days. So what we've done is we've used extra thick glass. And the two layers of glass, beneath those is a layer of grey privacy uh, tint. Uh, and that blocks the uh, emitted light, the visible light from entering into the cabin and stops it from being too bright. And then between those layers, what we've also got is something called a solar film. And that reflects actually 95% of all the emitted rays uh, from the sun. So you get this really light, airy interior without any effect on the ambient temperature. And of course, this isn't just a taxi that we plan to sell in London. We plan to go around the world. So we've tested this roof in some of the most extreme conditions imaginable. We've been out in the Arizona desert, uh, baking in the sun for, for days on end. And of course, not only the roof, but the air conditioning system needs to be able to cope with that. So whether it's uh, the middle of a, of a desert or indeed uh, the middle of July in London, we know that the, the roof is up to the job. 
The construction of the roof is also very good at noise insulation, so it's an, an additional way of keeping that interior environment much more quiet and refined for passengers. Uh, something that a few drivers have asked us is how safe is the roof? Uh, they're worried about perhaps malicious damage or, or, or cracking in the event of an accident. And I suppose the best way to explain that is to say it's a bit like a windscreen. So it's very unlikely to, to crack uh, or, or to shatter. Uh, that, that layer of uh, a film within the laminate uh, acts like a security film. So much like a windscreen, if you were to have significant stone damage, you're more likely to get a, a chip or a small crack. Uh, and, and actually, there's, there's very, very little chance of that screen uh, shattering. In fact, that, that doesn't even really do it justice. Uh, yes, it is very much like a, a windscreen in its construction, um, but actually the glass is much thicker, so it's, it's a lot stronger than a windscreen. And then if you think about the location, it's far less susceptible to that sort of damage. Uh, it's not got debris and, 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 and things from the road kicking up and, and hitting it. So the panoramic roof, it looks great. It provides a lovely, bright uh, environment for passengers whilst keeping them cool, gives them a completely new uh, uh, perspective on the world outside. And actually it's, it's uh, a great feature that comes with very few drawbacks. Um, it's very lightweight, it's very strong, resilient and safe uh, and resists damage. And should the worst happen in extreme circumstances, it's far, far easier to replace actually than, than a traditional uh, steel roof panel. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be other things like ball joints, you know, and the other kind of things. Even if the electric motor works great, there'll still be mechanical things that will go wrong with them. So adhesive is our method to allow us to make sure that we dissipate the energy and keep the part connected at the point where an event would happen. So this technology is based on British sports car technology and has been used successfully for the last 20 years. What we've done is taken it to the next level in terms of size, in terms of uh, functional performance, with many, many more requirements of a taxi than that of a sports car. But what you can see is a similar type of technology and a similar type of uh, strategy. The durability and the consistency of those vehicles is out there in the marketplace. So our technology is to bond the aluminium together using uh, hot cure adhesive and this means that we reduce the number of fasteners, but at the same time, we improve the vehicle strength because we end up with joints that are uh, cohesive and well connected across the whole of the joint rather than at single points. Wonderful purpose-built facility designed to check many, many faults around the vehicle, taking into account its technology. It is enhanced again from our previous levels of vehicles. Um, we have sectional checks throughout the build. Um, so when it's on production, we, we verify each area, so whether it's fitting door casings or whether it's fitting fascias or whether it's checking fluid fills, we check panel alignments um, all the way through the build process. Once it's finished those processes, it goes to our final line, um, which is behind me, again behind me here, uh, called our customer acceptance team area, where there's a dedicated team of people who again verify that the vehicle has been built to process and that all faults are cleared and when we complete systematic checks for all areas. So we're looking inside, we're looking outside, uh, and we're looking at functional checks as well. So once we've finished in here, we then go outside of the building. Outside the building, we have a squeaks and rattles road test area. The guys go around that area several times over different terrains, again, trying to find faults, trying to listen to how the vehicle is perceived. When you say the facility, when we look around the plant, we have DC tools around the plants. So all our major fixings for seat belts and seats have, have direct current tools, which basically means you, the operator picks the appropriate tool up, checks it from a barcode point of view to the station to make sure that marries the specification of the vehicle. He completes his operation. If the operation is correct, he gets a green light. Uh, then the vehicle is allowed to go forward. If he doesn't complete his operation, he gets a red light and the, and, the, and the track stops, and then we investigate the fault. So that's one way of we've invested in technology to improve important features on the vehicle. So from a production line point of view, um, they're looking at things like um, the alignment of the panels. Obviously with taxis, it's very important that the taxi looks fresh. The taxi is built and the gaps look even. Uh, the, uh, the panels shut clearly, closely, every time. So from a door closing effort, you know, my experience with the taxi industry, particularly the right-hand rear door, is absolutely critical. We must be able to close that normally every time, first time every time. So we, we're aware of the key features on the taxi, and in many, many aspects, we take special operations and double checks on that as well through not only production operators, but also some of our quality people based on the track. 
I've been in the taxi industry about 16 years now. I've spent many times talking to customers, working with our dealer groups to make sure that we really understand what those guys need and what's important for them. So really what we're trying to do is prevent faults leaving the, leaving the factory. And if we find a fault, it's not just about this car, it's about feeding those faults back to subsequent cars. So we're continually looking for that to make sure the customer's getting both a functional and a cosmetic uh, a pleasing vehicle which meets their needs. We're always interested in feedback and the guys are very mindful of that and they're listening to people, whether they're internal people or suppliers or, or indeed customers as well. I'm uh, Steve Swift, I'm the Head of Vehicle Development uh, on the TX programme. I've uh, been on the programme now for two and a half years, relatively short time in, in the best facilities around the world, ranging from uh, the north of Sweden. Um, to Arizona for the cold and hot weather testing which is used for the powertrain and for suspension and braking and stability control development. Um, but we've also used a host of other proving grounds uh, here in the UK and also in, in Europe. So Myra has been uh, in business now since uh, the 1950s. It's been at the cutting edge of, uh, of vehicle R&D in the UK for, uh, for a long, long time. Uh, they have every facility that you could possibly want to use. Hot and cold chambers for when we're, uh, uh, we're not in the north of Sweden or Arizona. Um, EMC testing, uh, high speed circuits, durability circuits with rough road, salt spray, um, water test, handling circuits, wet handling, dry handling, um, abuse testing facilities. Um, one of the best crash facilities in, in the UK, which is we've used extensively for the safety development on the car, um, and uh, too many other facilities to list, really. There's a lot of active safety systems on, on this car. Um, it, it, it is up there with the, uh, the best in the industry at the moment in terms of sign recognition, uh, autonomous braking, um, for, to avoid those, uh, those rear end collisions in, uh, in both in cities and uh, outside. So as we're coming closer to production, uh, the plan is now that uh, we've got enough confidence in the product. Um, it has been tested to date by uh, a, a skilled and quite large team of engineers but ultimately the product is going to be used by uh, a very particular group of, of drivers, uh, the taxi industry. So uh, the next step in the program will be to get taxi in the hands of a small group uh, of, of taxi drivers to get some real world uh, experience and, and the opportunity to do any of that fine tuning that we might have to do uh, late on in the process to, to optimize the, ta the taxi for, uh, for its future life. Is it going to be like obviously cheaper to maintain? Because uh, obviously the TX is obviously expensive to maintain as well. So obviously the years, obviously doing so many mileage, uh, it's quite a, quite expensive to um, maintain. So it'll actually co cost less to maintain um, because of the way that the vehicle operates. In in that the internal combustion engine doesn't operate all of the time. That then allows us to extend the intervals on some of the parts, like air filters, etc. Okay, so we've got a really good part strategy. We work with our partner, Unipart, who we've worked with now for uh, tens of years. Um, we've got, we've taken the the bomb of the vehicle, the builder materials, which is roughly around 7,000 parts, and we'll be supplying 2,000 parts, which will cover everything on the vehicle. Uh, we've got a parts catalogue that makes that very, very easy to do so. We have nominated repairers that will be looking after the vehicles. Uh, we supply them with really, really good information. Uh, we've got a very in-depth workshop manual, which uh, we've constructed in a way that it's very pictorial, uh, can be translated to many different languages uh, and is e easy to understand. That, again, that covers every bit of the vehicle. So for a dealer point of view, from a, from a maintainer point of view, it will be a, an easy car to work on.
Uh, well, my biggest question will have to be, um, whereabouts are all the charging points going to be? My role is to develop a range of solutions that will enable drivers to charge up at home, at work and out in the public domain. There are several great apps which will enable drivers to filter networks by speed, location, availability and many more. So are you going to tell me that 20 odd thousand black cab drivers are going to be fighting over for these half a dozen points? I appreciate CFL is going to put more in, but when are they going to put them in? There are already 13,000 charge points across the UK and many more being installed to support the shift towards e-mobility platforms. LEVC is also committed to working with local authorities, government, network operators and uh, transport authorities to install dedicated taxi charging infrastructure that will support drivers in daily operation. For example, Transport for London have committed to install over 300 charge points dedicated for taxi use in daily operation. There are many more schemes like this being deployed across the rest of the UK. I haven't really got that. No, I live on the 18th floor, so I'm wondering how I'll plug it in. Firstly, if you do have access to off-street charging and can charge at home, you can apply to the government for a home charge grant. We have a one-stop solution and can help you through that process. If you don't have access to off-street parking, there are a number of solutions being installed by government and network operators which will allow residents to charge on street outside their house. Where are the recharging points? My local council do not want to put one outside of my uh, block of flats I live in. I live in. I live nine floors up. If you want to buy an electric taxi, LEVC will help you choose the right solution for you. Electricity, like diesel, is a fuel and you'll be expected to pay for it. However, we still envisage that drivers will save at least £100 per week uh, in fuel costs and operational costs. How long does it take to charge the battery as well? Similar to mobile phones, there are a number of tariffs and business models to suit the customer's preference and needs. These aim to provide the customer with a convenient solution that best fits them. These range from pay-as-you-go, including contactless payment solutions, to subscription-based models. Like a petrol station, the price of charging will vary depending on the location and speed of charge. However, suppliers are committed to providing competitive rates that will enable you to make cost savings on the vehicle. The TXC City has been designed with a range of charging solutions, so it's a very flexible platform to enable charging. Price-wise, everyone's going to be concerned how much it's going to be. I mean, that's really important. Uh, if we're able to afford it or not, I mean, it might be all good if you're coming out with a good uh, uh, battery option here, but is it worthwhile, you know? And if it's uh, dual, petrol as well as battery, because in case the battery packs out, you can't charge and obviously you've got the option of petrol. Affordability for the driver has always been central to our planning. So let me explain a little bit more about that. The vehicle is powered by an electric vehicle motor. And behind that, it's supported by a range extender. So there are two things in that. One is to take away range anxiety, but to come back to your question about affordability, the key thing with the EV powertrain is that actually that reduces your, your traditional running costs. The typical driver is likely to save £100 per week by going forward with a new TX taxi. So the savings will come from the fact that the vehicle has uh, an a EV motor as its base motor, and it has a range extender and over a five-year ownership period to save up to £25,000 on fuel and running costs. When we put together the PCP finance offer and we worked with Black Horse, we went out to the leading experts in residual values. So as part of your PCP, there is a guaranteed future value. So that's where we and our finance partner guarantee the value of the vehicle in five years time. And we've been able to set very competitive, uh, very strong values based on the market feedback from those industry experts. 
The question of affordability is actually something that affects drivers that rent. You shouldn't just look at the sticker price, you should actually consider the residual value and the running costs during the life of the vehicle. But there's an even more compelling reason for the drivers to want to drive the new TX. Not only is it a more comfortable place to spend several hours a day, but once the fuel savings are considered, it's entirely possible that at the end of the week, the taxi driver will have more money in his pocket than he did in the past. How much is the taxi, the new taxi going to cost? I've heard about the, um, the battery. You have to obviously uh, rent the battery. Uh, how much is that going to be? Is it going to be cost effective? So when looking at the purchase and ownership costs, the key thing is that we put together a very competitive and affordable finance package built around a PCP package. And this has been done in conjunction with our finance house, Black Horse. The, the funding costs work out at £177 per week. And this is calculated over a five-year period. That's the total uh, ownership costs, the total funding costs. To drive, happy to drive an electric one. If somebody wants to subsidise me to drive one, I'll happily drive one. Would like to underwrite the costs, I would order one tomorrow. TfL, in addition, will provide additional funding to support the oldest vehicles on the road, to encourage the decommissioning of vehicles on the road. So vehicles over 10 years old will be able to, there will be a grant, a decommissioning grant of up to £5,000 for vehicles between the age of 10 years and 15 years. All of this support is, uh, helps to achieve the 177 per week and that excludes the decommissioning grant that's available to the driver um, from TfL.